Welcome back. I hope you continue to enjoy your studies and that you have been able to apply them to your daily activities. Here we continue with Unit 1, but we are moving on to Lesson 2. In Lesson 2, we focus on strategic leaders and on policy makers, on the leadership positions and changes within the USIC since 9-11, and the roles and responsibilities of strategic leaders, and the challenges facing strategic leaders within the USIC, and, and the key principles of the US National Security Strategy of 2013. We end with a summary of what we covered. We begin with strategic leaders and policymakers. The US Army War College defines strategic leaders as those who guide the achievement of their organizational vision within a larger enterprise by directing policy and strategy, building consensus, acquiring and allocating resources, influencing organizational culture, and shaping complex and ambiguous external environments. A tip to success. As you work during the course and you have to deal with strategic leaders, keep in mind the operative words here. Those that are underlined, guide, directing, building, acquiring, allocating, influencing, and shaping. In contrast to strategic leaders, policymakers are those who are tasked with setting the policy plan that will affect the vision of a strategic leader. We now move on to the, the leadership positions within the USIC and their roles and responsibilities. We begin with the president as an individual, the National Security Council advisor, and the National Security Council staff. And within the National Security Council, the Principals Committee, which does not include the President. Within the Department of Defense, we have the Office of the Secretary of Defense, which oversees civilian operations. The Joint Chiefs of Staff and the Joint Staff, which oversee military operations. Within the Department of State, we have the Office of the Secretary of State and the Department Heads. Then we have Congress that controls budgets, makes policy, and exercises oversight. And finally, we have the USIC in general. Here is a picture of a meeting of the National Security Council in 2010. Additional roles and responsibilities since 9-11 include the National Counterterrorism Center, which is tasked and responsible for counterterrorism efforts nationally and internationally. The National Joint Terrorist Task Forces, these are small cells of investigators, analysts, linguists, SWATs from law enforcement and the IC agencies. These cells and groups are deployed in many cities in the U.S. Then we have the liaison networks, or seconded positions among the agencies. By seconded, it means that the person is part of the staff of one agency, but does the work in another agency. And then those tasks and responsible for the production and dissemination of intelligence reports by agencies working together on special projects. Also, among their roles and responsibilities include the offset or counterbalance of positions of the current administration. We need to keep in mind that the president and the administration are transient for or eight years. They focus on broad policymaking agendas, the president influences current and mid-term intelligence, 
but almost always there is a gulf between the president's interests and those of the bureaucracy of government. The USAIC provides valuable intelligence to the president and to the advisors. The USAIC does not necessarily shape the policy of the president or advisors. And let us be very careful about this. The USIC does not make predictions. It produces estimates of trends and possibilities. That is the reason why you see the national intelligence estimate. You never see the national intelligence prediction. In addition to the roles and responsibilities is to focus on long-term intelligence as opposed to current or mid-term. And the identification of long-term intelligence and allocation of resources to maintain the capabilities required to sustain long-term intelligence. Balance the cycle of current intelligence with the cycle of long-term intelligence. And this cycle is affected by the political environment, by volatility, and by unpredictability. And they produce the U.S. National Security Strategy. As I said, we are going to look at the strategy of 2013. And we will focus on the key principles of this strategy after we see in the next slide the challenges faced by the strategic leaders within the USIC. The challenges facing the strategic leaders include obtaining funding of long-term projects that cannot show immediate or measurable results or benefits. This is what they tell you that they don't deal with hypotheticals because the hypotheticals are the what if of situations. But interestingly enough, there are some agencies that based on the experience of the last 10 years are beginning to ask not for hypotheticals, but for predictive intelligence, which in my opinion is the same. Also, the challenges include negotiating access to intelligence. This means moving beyond the need to know or for your eyes only intelligence and ensuring that intelligence is shared timely and appropriately within agencies or within the government. Another challenges include integrating cultural differences between the DOD, the DOS, and civilian agencies, and bringing together the DOD, the CIA, the DHS, and other agencies to collaborate in a common mission. Not easy to do. Now, as I said, we are going to look at the U.S. National Security Strategy of 2013. The key principles in this strategy guide the USAIC and direct what it does. Here is a summary of them. Lead the international order as a nation, first among equals, to encourage stability, foster economic growth, promote democratic values, and protect global strategic interests of the U.S. Supporting an international system beneficial to U.S. interests, but neither dependent on nor hostile to U.S. global predominance. A shift from U.S. to East and from states to non-state actors. A dispersion of influence and greater uncertainty focus on global institutions and on cybersecurity, terrorism, and nuclear weapons, and an access to strategic resources and a special focus on the Middle East. What did we cover in lesson one? We covered the difference between strategic leaders and policymakers. But there is a very interesting question. Could one person be both at the same time? Think about this because you are going to find this in your reports and in the final exam. 
we focused on the roles, responsibilities, and challenges of strategic leaders who must change and adapt as national intelligence requirements change. We focused on changes in authorities and configuration of the USIC since 9-11, and we look, looked briefly on the key principles in the U.S. National Intelligence Strategy of 2013. These principles guide the USIC and direct what the USIC must focus on and attend to. Thank you for attending the lecture. I hope it was helpful to you in your studies. And I look forward to seeing you again in lesson in unit two. Thank you very much.